Fantastic, thank you. Um, so I just hit record now. Um, and then the other thing I'll ask is that you remain muted while not talking, um, just to kind of help the flow of things. And then also, you know, it's a small group, but uh, feel free to use the chat, um, especially if you have thoughts while other people are talking and you want to just get it out there, or if you have a question or would prefer to communicate via the chat, um, I'll respond to it as soon as possible. Um, so, you know, to start off, we can do kind of a quick round of introductions. Um, so my name is Lisa Hollywood. And, you know, as I said, I've been working on this since the summer. Um, and I, I work on zoning studies throughout New England. Um, and so I'm looking forward to discussing the future of industrial zones in Norwalk with you tonight. Um, and I'm seeing we have a few more newcomers here. I just want to raise that um, this is being recorded. Um, so just wanted to let you know. Um, and if you do not want to be recorded, I would advise you to, to not participate. Um, so yeah, I think we can start going around. If you could just introduce yourself and if you want to add why you're interested in the industrial zone study, um, feel free to, uh, to add that. Um, so I'm just gonna start with the first person on my screen. So I see Mark is up at the top. Mark, if you wanna unmute and introduce yourself. Sure, Mark DeWinger. Uh, live in South Norwalk, uh, Harborview area. I'm very interested because of some of the plans around the power plant usage. Okay, um, next on my screen is Diane Maricela. I hope I pronounced that right. You got it. Um, yes, uh, Diane Laricella. I have lived in almost every district in the city. Um, I'm a former regulator that uh, regulated industry. Um, and uh, ever since I've lived in Norwalk for 35 years have felt that um, as I saw certain areas of the city become big box areas that were formerly industrial sites, I thought that there was a need to um, take a look to see how we could optimize good neighbors, clean industry to help our tax base, but also provide good jobs. So I was so thrilled when uh, UTL was hired and um, I uh, am an environmental consultant. So I uh, am very interested in making sure that uh, whatever areas that we uh, look at, that we um, make sure that they're good neighbors uh, and they control their odor, dust, and noise, as well as pollution, of course. Um, I think uh, one thing I just wanted to say is that I think that a lot of people in town, not on this particular Zoom call, when they hear the word industrial, they do think of belching smokestacks. And I just would like the city to consider making sure that they suggest the 21st century ways that include some heavy industry, because no one would be allowed to have belching smokestacks anymore. And I think there needs to be some edu education to make sure people know that. Thanks. And I look forward to this discussion. Thanks, Diane. Yeah, we, we fully agree with that perspective. Um, yeah, and, I've, and I've spoken with many of you on other, because of my background. So I'm really happy that you're here. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Um, so next is Elizabeth. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Hyden. I live on Split Rock Road, which is part of the Village Creek neighborhood. And I'm right across the um, estuary from the uh, Wilson Avenue um, where they just put up that new building. I, I don't even know the name of it. Um, and I also would be affected by traffic to the power station with what's go, uh, intended to go on there. And I'm very concerned with not only the noise, I hear the rock crushing, you know, and I, I hear the reverse beeping trucks and all that kind of stuff. But also, um, I know when they talked about putting up that new building that's across from me, um, they talked about having the type of lighting that doesn't extend beyond the property line type thing. And I was very happy to hear that, but uh, it has turned out that I, the light does, I mean, it casts shadows in my bedroom the light that it doesn't emit. So it's not, maybe it's called that type of lighting, but in reality, it didn't turn out to be that. So I'm just, I, I must admit, I'm pretty cynical about these things, which to some people probably seem pretty subtle, but to me, they, they aren't subtle. And I also, um, 
you know, they took out that mound of earth when they put that building in. And um, there is a row of evergreens now behind the building, but I, I am concerned about just the tendency humans have to eliminate trees and not really do much except putting up a, an occasional tree somewhere. So these are my concerns. Thank you for being here. Yeah, definitely. Um, thank you. So next on my screen is Galen. Oh, Galen, I can't hear you. I think you need to unmute. Good advice. <laughs> uh, I'm on the Zoning Commission, so I hear a lot of the arguments and for why some of these uses are terribly disruptive to neighborhoods. And I really get that. Um, but on the other hand, industrial uses are healthy for a city if they can be organized in a way that, uh, that doesn't disrupt residential neighborhoods. The proposal that they had, which was withdrawn for a big distribution center in Norden, I thought would have been just horrific for East Norwalk. Um, and I hope I can say that now that the application is withdrawn, but uh, I have a lot of sympathy for the difficulties. And also sympathy for the fact that we need to have places where people work. Yeah, definitely difficult to reconcile the, the different uses. Um, thank you. So next I have Dominique everyone. Dominique Johnson, and I'm an at-large council member. And um, I, I too hear from a lot of folks about zoning issues, sustainability issues. And these are issues that affect obviously the entire city, but um, especially South Norwalk and East Norwalk. And so I think that for me, what's also most important is is that I hear from folks who care deeply about sustainability in the city and reclaiming the waterfront. And those are two issues I find really important about the health of our harbor, our upper harbor in particular, and ability to use and recreate for all there. So those are some issues that more recently have come to my attention that I care deeply about as well. So um, I think that this opportunity also to rezone if we don't take it to make the city more sustainable and livable and accessible for all is a really missed opportunity. So I'm really looking forward to, to hearing more from what people think and, and knowing we have a, a great firm and you all is, is, really, is a really great comfort in that, so. Yeah, that's great. I think the, the second topic that we'll be discussing today is about specifically about the waterfront. So it'll be good to, to hear your point of view on that, especially um, so next is the, the other Diane. Hello. Good evening, everyone. It's Diane Cece. Um, I live in East Norwalk, um, and uh, that logo is here because I'm on the board of the East Norwalk Neighborhood Association. So I'm here as both a resident and a board member of the, of the uh, stakeholder group, um, which is primarily south of I-95. So um, I would just say to, um, to Lisa, just as some feedback, um, East Norwalk contains multiple iterations of the industrial zones as you see from your map. So we encompass both the waterfront and the um, heavy industrial with the water pollution um, control and yard waste, but also Norton is within our boundaries um, and the um, neighborhood industrial that runs along the railroad line. So we have a lot at stake here in terms of I'm wanting to provide feedback into what we think the future should hold. Um, I'm, a, I'm a little concerned and I, I'll just pass this back to you as consultants that it would be helpful for the public to have access to these presentations ahead of the evening so we can review it even if it's just bullet points. Um, there are several board members present tonight along with a subcommittee that ENNA has that's in looking at um, zoning regulations within East Norwalk. And presently we're heavily focused on industrial, um, alluding to just what Ms. Wells was talking about with the Norton site that was withdrawn. So I'm glad to see that there's um, at least a couple of council people and a zoning commissioner on here. Um, so we're looking at those and I'm a little concerned that 
Um, several of us have already pointed out offline that there seems to be some fairly big changes to the presentation we're seeing tonight versus the draft recommendations that were made to your committee, Steve's committee back in March. But I didn't see any other meetings of the committee um, with agenda. So I don't think the committee had met again since those recommendations, but now we're seeing some fairly um, significant changes in height and what you're recommending here. I do also want to say that um, in terms of the heavy industrial uses along the waterway, particularly where um, along the Norwalk River, that you kept that in there. And I, I think that there may be some industrial uses that would have to be grandfathered in, but that I'd hope there'd be consideration for removing them all together. Um, and those can be, you know, certainly be highlighted as, as you know, groups talk about the specific uses. Thank you. Thanks, Diane. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I've noted all of your comments um, and you know, we'll take those back to the team. Um, there's a lot there. Um, so next is Georgiana. Am I unmuted now? I can hear you, yeah. Oh yes, thank you. Yes, my name is Georgiana Rucker. I'm a resident of South Norwalk, the condominium that I live in is at 25 Chestnut Street, but the entrance into our condominium is Henry Street. So I'm here tonight to get information because there's development in my neighborhood right at the train station. They're gonna be doing major development there and on Chestnut Street, which they've started and it's industrial and residential. And so um, Henry Street is a very narrow street, but it's one of the ways to enter the South Norwalk Railroad Station. So, and there's industrial um, on Chestnut Street as well, but that's why I'm here basically for knowledge and information. Great. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, and then lastly is Darlene. Hi everybody. Uh, I guess I should show my face. I don't have a picture like Diane. I might need one of those. Um, can you see me? I think I did that. Hi. Um, so I, uh, I live in South Norwalk. I'm on the council. I'm on this. I was on this committee. Um, and as you all know, that my my greatest concern are the um, industrial yards that are in South Norwalk. And you and and from I'm sure your 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 um, review, you know how they're sprinkled in all throughout the community. Um, and, and, and something just really needs to be done about that. And that, 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 is, that is a real concern. You know, we talk about the health of the harbor and the waterways, which is great, but people's personal health um, in these communities and where all these things are happening, where there are piles of rocks and, so, and all sorts of things um, um, is a health concern. Or residents in, in, in South Norwalk in particular, just given the, the, the structure of how South Norwalk, um, um, the roads, you all talked about that, how, how close houses are together and, and, and something really needs to be done about it. But, and, and I'm also just gonna give a shout out to the ladies that are on this call. Um, they are very committed to, to improving the quality of life of folks in Norwalk. Um, and so um, it's always good to see folks involved and engaged um, and, and believing that there is a need for change and that we're gonna make that change in South Norwalk, not just South Norwalk, for the entire city. Um, that you know, we have these sites all across the city and we need to do better. And I think we can do better and we will do better um, if we're really intent on making Norwalk a, a, a safe and healthy, um, vibrant community for every every resident, no matter where we live. So. Thanks, Darlene. Um, all right, so I have a, a very small presentation, um, which is basically just to prompt some some questions. So I'm going to share my screen quickly here. Um, and so, you know, today we're going to be talking about two main topics as we discussed on the, the larger call. So the first is focusing on industrial uses in Norwalk, and the second is focusing on the waterfront itself. Um, and so for topic one, we have kind of two main questions to get the conversation started. 
Um, and we're going to spend about 10 minutes on this. Um, so I'll just review the questions and then there are a couple of slides to kind of you know, reminders of what we showed in the presentation, but I'm going to try to run through this really quickly so that we leave as much time possible for, for um, your feedback. So the first question is, what manufacturing uses could you envision in Norwalk? And the second is, would you rather see small scale boutique manufacturing or larger scale light manufacturing that provides more jobs? And so this is just a reminder um, of how we were starting to look at the kind of diverse array of different types of industry that exist um, from the kind of larger, more intensive, heavy industrial uses to boutique manufacturing, which happens on much smaller parcels and doesn't have kind of the same impacts on neighbors. Um, and then this is just a reminder, kind of when we talk about boutique manufacturing, we're talking about these artisan manufacturing or small batch manufacturing businesses. Um, they often produce tangible goods, um, things like ceramic studios, bakeries, sewing or textile production. There's often kind of a, a space for making and then there might be an associated showroom. Um, and kind of different than a lot of other industrial uses is they often contri uh, they contribute to the sense of place and to the neighborhood fabric. Um, and they don't kind of produce the same noise and fumes and other forms of pollution. Um, and then the, the second is um, light industrial uses. So these are a lar larger size than the boutique manufacturing. Um, in Norwalk, they consist of things like oyster farming or research and development. Um, you know, might also include things like computer and electronic product manufacturers. Um, distribution, that kind of thing, microgreens. Um, and then just as a reminder, this is kind of what we mean by heavy industrial, which is quite different than the other two, much more of a polluting factor, things like oil storage, concrete plants, but we're really going to focus on the light industry and the boutique manufacturing in our discussion um, today. So I'm just going to pull up that uh, prompt with the two questions. And so maybe we can start with the first one, which is about what manufacturing uses um, you could envision for Norwalk today. Well, if there's no particular order, I'll, I'll go first. I, mean, I would prefer the boutique manufacturing I think it's more in, in keeping with the, the culture and tenor of the area. Artesians and the boutiques attracts an innovative group of people, but without developing large scale problems. Mm -hmm. um, are we just going in any order here or? Yeah, yeah, you can raise your hand and if there are multiple people yeah. you can raise your hand and I can call on thanks. you or you can um, just speak up. Yeah, thanks. So I'm not sure if I have my screen set up right because I see neither a chat option or a raise your hand. So I may need to reconfigure, but um, at any event, this is, this is Diane with the NNA again and I would um, echo that, that I'd be more inclined to um, want manufacturing that small scale boutique um, it's interesting, I see on the question though, that you said, would you rather see that or larger scale light manufacturing that provides more jobs? And I'm not quite sure that that's mutually exclusive. I think there could be, um, you know, different types of manufacturing could be um, larger scale, but not necessarily employ more people. And there could be small scale boutique um, that could have a lot of people, especially if it's hand assembly or specialty type work. So um, I wasn't quite sure of that definition there. But I also would say that um, when I think about manufacturing and industrial uses, I also tend to think about raw materials in and shipments going out. So I like to focus on the type of product as well um, and whether or not it's supplying just the immediate area or the region, um, or is it something that's you know tri-state or, or national, which would um, you know um, impact the type of transportation that would be used for the goods that are leaving? 
uh, manufacturing. Just a thought. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Dominique. I am that um, small scale boutique um, type industry would potentially be quite viable for Norwalk. And especially from what I've heard from small business owners here, we seem really poised for that to be such an amazing transformative thing for the city, um, especially given how kind of uh, technologically savvy, I would say that our city is, I know, in terms of trying to attract those type of businesses. What I've found in talking with community members, and I know Darlene might have, a, uh, I know would have a lot more to say about this being the district B rep, um, that kind of small scale boutique manufacturing, especially in the contractor yards to transition away from that. So there could be environmental uh, justice for those communities. Um, and especially with, with supporting minority and women owned businesses as the boutique manufacturing entities in South Norwalk and in parts of East Norwalk. And I, I raised the, the harbor because I also think having some of these more mom and pop you know, uh, businesses like the oyster businesses and things like that. Um, and really thinking about how the folks that can make their water, their, their, their money in the future off water uh, culture, aquaculture, that's what I'm trying to think, <laughs> um, could be another way to really approach this too. I don't think any of that would approach a large, larger scale light manufacturing. Um. I agree, Dami. Yeah. Uh... You know, and it's interesting, and, and, and Galen, I, I know that you, you've been in Norwalk and even Diane CC and Diane Lauricella, you know, so South Norwalk used to have, you know, what might have been called boutique types of manufacturing because we had Diane Knitwear, I think there was a hat factory, you know, even where kombucha is, there was the mousetrap factory. So, you know, we've had those types of industries in South Norwalk. And I think over time, you know, when businesses and, and folks moved out, you know, the, the, this, the, this, the, the, these now new types of contractor yards moved in. So I think the city may be going back to what its roots were in particular areas. I don't know, someone else could share, shed some light on that. So it's not, you know, it's not um, a, an unusual thing for, for South Norwalk in particular to go back to those small scale um, boutique or manufacturing types of jobs. Yeah, Diane, I, I see you've had your hand up for, for a little bit. Um, okay, well, I, I uh, really love study the history of manufacturing because as a, when I was a regulator, I had to learn, as Diane Cece said, from raw material, what type of hazardous waste and waste might be produced until it gets out the door as a manufactured product. And it's just amazing to learn how everything we have on, we're working on our computers, all has been manufactured somewhere. So again, I'm, I'm concerned because in Norwalk, there has not been great examples in the last 20 years or so, I've been around for 30, over 34 years, of clean industry necessarily, although Norden's I, I heard was a good neighbor. They were the largest, but in the days of the hat factories, it wouldn't have been the case. But that was then, that was before the, the EPA, et cetera. So I, I would like, I hope that the, the great people on this call would consider light manufacturing and possibly some what is listed as heavy manufacturing, as long as it is clean, free of noise, util utilizing, if possible, electric vehicles on site so that you don't have the diesel fumes. For instance, we have a place on Meadow Street. That street needs a major amount of review because currently, and I'm so happy enforcement, code enforcement was part of this discussion with Util, in parallel universe, I would love our city to have a vision and a plan immediately getting started on enforcement because many people in Norwalk have not had good examples of what manufacturing and good contractor yards could be. On the other hand, I, 
I'm a big proponent of um, light industrial and boutiques small scale that includes microgreens, which in Bridgeport, they have a couple of places where they used old industrial sites. Now they're putting together salad and they're employing local folks. And I would love to see whatever we come up with that we have an across the board review of using solar power and geothermal to electrify whatever kind of manufacturing we have. And that I'm going to put forth in the zoning study. But I very much feel that, for instance, we have Divine Brothers. They've been around since who knows when, maybe 1800s. Um, while a lot of people like a working harbor, and I know we're going to talk about waterfront later, um, they have a lot of uh, dust flying and sand in the road. So it's one of those things where I don't think we've had great exam as great examples of what a clean industry could be. Therefore, I think it affects people's view of what we could have. And lastly, I just wanted to say, I don't know where this would lay. It may be in light industry. And that is when uh, a lot of the jobs left Bridgeport and Norwalk and Stanford, industrial jobs, there still are people in the area that are very skilled machinists. Um, a lot of things now are done in China or Japan for a while or Mexico that use robots, but there still are people that are very skilled in machining and boutique machining. So I want to make sure that we're not limiting ourselves to something that sounds really good, like a bakery, when actually there are many, I would love to see a full list of what a boutique manufacturing or light manufacturing includes. And I know that UTL has that and they've seen it in other cities like Boston. I, I, um, I just know that there are many specialty things we could do. Lastly, I would love to see our city of Norwalk get rid of all of the illegal contractor yards that never should have been there. And um, the ones that are just out of compliance and are in a properly zoned contractor yard, they should become good neighbors and need to have enforcement. So um, lastly, I, I just thought along uh, Connecticut Avenue, there are a lot of big boxes that due to the fact that so many people are buying online, I think that's a whole new world of potential light industrial and boutique industrial use as well. And it was kind of left out because the city had a big box um, craze for like almost 15, 20 years, um, years ago. And many of those big boxes, uh, some will go out of business. We need something to fill those spaces. Those were all built upon old industrial sites. And I think it might be a possibility for additional, um, additional scale uh, light industrial and boutique. I think it could be a really great great possibility as well. So I'd love you, Teal, to consider that. Um, and uh, Perry Avenue and Muller Park have just not been utilized or optimized the way they could. They, they are a very exciting area. And I'm so happy that you, Teal, took my uh, suggestion to really look at Muller Park, uh, an old lace manufacturing place. They've had pollution issues. I'm not sure the best and highest use is just to, just to use it for artist space. I think we could include manufacturing again and to allow that owner to uh, rezone it. Uh, that zone was upzoned. And that's because all of the industrial use in the 80s was dirty and smelly. So what did the city do at the time? They upzoned it, not allowing the owners to have clean industry there. So I'd love us to consider going back and looking at clean, responsible industry in areas where we never had them. Thanks, Diane. I saw a lot of um, thumbs up to while you were speaking. Um, so a lot of, it seems like a lot of agreement. Um, so we're actually gonna have to move on to the next topic, but if you didn't get a chance to speak and you wanna touch on um, the industrial uses, um, you can, can still kind of raise those points. Um, so the, the second topic is, again, focused on the waterfront. And so, um, you know, the first question, what is the most important aspect of the Norwalk waterfront to you? Um, and I, I think we could also address both questions at once. Um, what would you like to see happen with the waterfront? Um, so I'll, I'll open it up now. 
Diane, that is that your hand raised? I can't tell if that was the old hand raise or if that's a, a new one. It's the same hand raise, I think. The same one. Okay, never mind. But we do have a lot of good uh, waterfront uses in in Norwalk. You know, if you look along Water Street, boat boat yards, boat boat manufacturing, fish wholesale, um, the oyster business. You know, there are a lot of good appropriate waterfront uses. Yeah, I've just pulled up. We have a couple slides in the deck just to kind of spark conversation. Um, but this one kind of shows yeah, the marine commercial, for instance, a lot of the different all uses. Yeah. Sorry, what's that? I was just thinking of the marine commercial. Those businesses all make sense on a waterfront. It seems yeah. to me. Definitely, yes. Um, and, you know, there's a wide variety of uses um, that we do see along the waterfront um, that include uses um, for industries that are reliant on the water, um, either for transportation or for, for other uses. Um, and then, you know, there's also at the same time the competing attraction of the waterfront for uses that want to take advantage of the views, for public access, and for other things. So, you know, it is, is you know, uh, an area that is very desirable for a number of reasons. Um, and there are many different zones that currently overlap with this area, um, many different interests, um, both for the city of Norwalk as well as the state. There are also environmental concerns as well. Um, so, a lot of kind of uh, things to contend with as we start to think about, um, you know, how we want to zone the, the waterfront for the future and where and if there should be kind of industrial uses along this area. Uh, Dummy. Thank you. Yes, just one thing I wanted to mention, which I've heard from folks a lot about, and I know Louise Washer would be better adept at describing it, but our grade of F from Save the Sound in our upper harbors, I think of great concern um, how, whether and how to dredge that, um, whose responsibility that would be. Um, because I think that it's true, you can see we have, you know, the commercial business district, we have recreation with the rowing clubs, um, very little public access there. We don't have a full Harbor Loop trail that's complete yet for recreation. And so I think that being really mindful of how we zone that so that we can improve on that F score. Um, because I, I think there would also be issues with climate change with the ability of the oyster farms to, and the oyster, uh, you know, suppliers to, to really be able to continue with their, their livelihoods. Um, so I think a really good mix that lends itself towards less heavy industry, and, and more sustainable um, sustainable industry needs to be, I think, a real, really priority there. The garbage heard, oh, the new yeah. is sort of disturbing there. Sorry, was that Galen? What's that? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I just said, you know, looking at the uses along the river, then you have the Noak W PCA and the garbage dump right in the middle of it, which is kind of a disturbing thing to have right there. So one thing that that site does have is they do have uh, waterfront access, which is not something that really exists in the other industrial par parcels here. Um, but this drawing shows both the existing public access to the waterfront in this light green. And then this dark green shows, you know, what if we revise the zoning to make it easier for um, the public to access the waterfront through these kind of industrial commercial or, or industrial zones. Oh, it oh. looks like our breakout room is gonna close in, in oh. one minute. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, quick. Could we submit additional ideas in writing to uh, UTL and Steve? Absolutely. 
Because yes. um, I've had a lot of uh, work as a, the, I, I pre preceded uh, Louise Washer as president of the Norwalk River Watershed Association. And um, there are some legacy polluted sites along this stretch that need to be reviewed, I think, to see what their status is. And that includes Oyster Shell Park, a former dump, and then Platt Street across the river, that is an old drum dump. And uh, I'd love to see those evaluated. There, uh, one is owned privately right now. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to be starting to focus in on the waterfront um, okay. in the coming months. So that's going to be just kicking off. So it'll be perfect. 